Hey everyone, and welcome to the second episode in my scrolling platformer tutorial series. Today I'm going to be adding the animation into the game because right now our player is a box. Top of this, I'm going to go ahead and add particles. I showed them last episode in the beginning of my video. But before we get into the episode, don't forget to hit the like button and squish the subscribe button for more scratch tutorials. And also drop a comment down below. But anyway, let's get coding. I got a lot of comments last episode about asking where my art was. But last episode, I didn't show how to use any art. So how I'm doing it is I'm going to share the art for that specific episode and the ones before it. If I don't use any art, I'm not going to share the one ahead. But now I am going to to share a project where you can get the art so far. Inside of the player, I have a bunch of new costumes. 17 new costumes to be exact. The first three is idle, so it's kind of hard to see, but it's just a three frame idle animation. Then I have a eight frame walk animation. So if I go through the frames, these are it. So walk five, walk six, walk seven, walk eight. Then I have a jump frame, which is when you go up, a fall frame, and a fall two frames. Then I have a slide frame, a roll grab right and a roll left which is just the roll right flipped vertically and then I have a new sprite called effects and within this I have a first costume called jump it's kind of hard to see but if I make it red you can see it's just three lines and it's kind of off centered from the center point it is to the left of it then I have contact which is just a little circle 26 by 26 pixels I have dust which is just like a puffy particle dust and then I have sensor which is just a box located at the bottom of the player. So if I go ahead and copy and paste the player in, you can see it's right at the bottom of the player, so it's going to detect if we're touching the ground or not. So that way we can spawn some particles. Now that you know the sprites and costumes you need, let's get into the actual meat and potatoes of this video. So click onto the player and add a new when I receive start loop. We're going to do a when I receive start in a forever loop. Make a brand new block animation control. Controller. So this is going to control all of the animations for our sprite and make sure you do run screen run screen without refresh or run without screen refresh and click OK. You can go ahead and just put that right underneath. Pull that brand new custom block from the my block section into this forever loop right here. Put a switch costume to idle in this animation controller. You can see the use of the hitbox. Look at the hat. It is sticking into the wall which is what we want because it is still still colliding with the hitbox instead of the costume. If it was colliding with the costume, you could actually, like jumping right here, you could get stuck on the little ledge of your cape. And that's not what I want. So that's why we did the hitbox costume. So you can see all the work we did last episode coming into play here. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of this switch costume too, and let's add a new variable called state. And this is for all sprite. This is just going to be the animation state of the player. If else, and let's start with eight equals to slide. Go into the platformer script and find this A or D and all of this stuff and put a set state to slide right here. If we go ahead and play this project, the state is zero, but if we go ahead and start sliding, it sets the state to slide. Inside of this right here, set the state to slide. Now let's detect if we are rolling. So if roll delay less than 42, so that means we're in the middle of a roll, then we're going to set the state to roll. We go ahead and roll. Look at that it sets the state to roll. Then in the else here, let's do if y speed less than negative five. So that means we're going down, then we're going to set the state to fall. Then we're going to do another if else and do if y speed is greater than zero. And that means that we are jumping. So set the state to jump. And then for our final if else, if the x speed is greater than 0 0.5, then we're going to set it to walk like this. In the else, we're going to to set it to idle if we're not doing any of those. Then if we move right, it sets it to walk. And you can see that it's all working except for when we move to the left. Why is it not setting it to walk? That doesn't make sense. Well, if you think about it, when we go to the left, the X speed is negative. So it never reaches greater than 0.5. So we need to use this abs of block. It makes the X speed positive. So how the abs of works is say X speed is negative five. The abs of X speed would be five. It just always makes it positive. 
so now even if we move left it'll set it to walk so this is how we know this is all working properly now let's go ahead and actually make this all animate because right now it's just setting a variable to a number make a brand new block and name this costume like so two slashes start costume with a colon and then an input called start costume then an a label called total costumes with a colon and then an input called total costumes and last but not least a title called speed with a colon and then an input called speed and don't do run screen without refresh there and when you're done it should look like this it should have labels for all of them and then inputs for all of them switch costume idle right here then a switch costume to abs of right here but changes to floor start costume plus make a new variable called costume which is our costume costume variable plus costume and then do mod instead of that costume start costume plus costume mod the total costumes like so and put that inside of that floor so it should look like this floor of start costume plus costume mod total costume then change the costumes by speed and last but not least if costume greater than 10,000 set the costume back to zero so that just limits it from getting so huge so pull out one of these costumes right here just put it on the bottom of this animation controller so let's do the start costume is number two then the total costumes i'm going to go and tell idle three so that'd be one two three costumes in total so do total costumes is three and then the speed let's just set it to 0 0.1 look at that it is going through all three of those animations and our platformer script still works and to prove that it's working i'm going to add numbers onto all of these costume so i'm going to do one two three and if we go ahead and play this game as you can see it's going through one two three one two three one two three it's just cycling through if we can change the time to one you can see it's going really quickly through all the animation now that we have it all set up let's do it all right so start on the very bottom right here and add an if else now go ahead and do if state is equal to slide costume start costume 16 so that is number 16 which is the sliding then set the total costumes to one because there's only one and set the speed to zero because we're not actually cycling through anything so now you should see that when we slide it should switch to the slide costume another if else in here and do if state is equal to fall then we're going to set the start costume to number 14 set the total costumes to two and the speed to 0 0.3 so if we go ahead and look the starting costume 14 is our falling and then there is two of them so the total costumes is two now let's go ahead and add the jump in so do if else and do if state equals to jump then we're going to set the starting costume to 13 and the total costumes to one and the speed to zero duplicate this and do if state equals to roll then we are going to go ahead and do turn 15 degrees and instead of that we're going to do x speed times three else if state is equal to one Walk, then we are going to set the starting costume 5 and the total costumes to 8 and we're going to set the speed to abs of x speed then take that divided by 12 that's just going to make our walking animation go faster the faster our x speed variable is just a normal in this else and this is going to be idle so start costume is 2 and the total costumes 3 speed is 0 0.1 okay so there is all of it nice and awesome but if we play this game it's stuck on the sliding so how do we fix this it's actually quite easy all we need to do is put a set on the very bottom and set the state to in a and now once we start this game oh yes look at this we have a jump in a fall we have a slide animation we can walk but we can't actually look to the left the way to fix this is simply by setting the rotation style to left right and immediately you can see that it looks normal and oh man look how good that that looks with all the animations in. I notice I messed up on my roll right here. Let's set it to 17 instead of 13. So here's a little problem. Our rolling is not so rolly anymore. It's kind of weird looking to be honest. Take all this off and put an if else. Now go ahead and do if the state is equal to roll, then we're going to set the rotation style to all around. Otherwise set it to 
left, right, and set the state to in A. Add an if else into the if equals to roll x speed greater than zero, which means we are going to the right, then we're going to do what we have. Otherwise, we're going to set it to 18, which is the flipped version of the roll. And all the other settings are the same. So now you should see that costume looks more normal. So now that we have the costume sorted out to where it's not upside down and all that stuff, the roll doesn't really look like a roll. It just looks like he's nose planting into the ground. So here's why. If we look at a platforming script, we have the script setting it to the direction. So what you can do is add an if else and condition this to only happen if we're not rolling. If the state is equal to roll, then do nothing otherwise do that script. So now you can see that, oh yes, look at this, it actually looks like we are rolling. So we can slide, wall jump, roll around like a roly poly, and oh my gosh, it actually looks pretty awesome. Alrighty, so now that we have the animation sorted out, we need to add some particles because particles are awesome and particles look good. Let's click onto the effects and add a wind green flag clicked, a forever loop, and a set ghost effect to 100%. So that way it is completely invisible. Then do a show, switch costume to sensor, and then go to player. So that way it follows the player around perfectly. Then in if else right here and do touching the ground. Then make a new variable for all sprites and name this touching ground with a question mark of course. And go ahead and if we're touching the ground then set touching ground to Y for yes, otherwise in for no. You can see that when we are touching the ground it sets it to yes. Now go ahead and do a when I start as a clone, a hide right here, then a wait zero seconds. So this is actually going to make it wait one frame. Then we're going to go ahead and make some new variables. We're going to make one called clone ID, and this is for the sprite only. Effect X for the sprite only, and one last one called effect Y for the sprite only as well. So now we have three for the sprite only variables, clone ID, effect X, and effect Y. So you can go ahead and hide all those, and now let's set them all up. Set clone ID to zero for now, then we're going to set the effect X to pull out this block right here and change this to X position. Set the effect X to X position of player and then do set the effect Y to Y position of player. Now when I start as a clone, do a forever loop, go to effect X and effect Y. And the reason we're using variables is eventually we're going to make this scrolling, so this just makes it easier for later. Now clear the graphics effects, go to front, and then show. Set the size to 100%, set rotation style to all around. So let's go ahead and test this out. Go into the player and move around a bit, then click create clone of effects. You can see that it's making little boxes wherever you are at. So that means that you've set up the effect effects sprite good so far. So let's go ahead and continue on and make the actual particles. So let's start by setting this to jump, which is going to be our first particle. So do an if else in here, if clone ID is equal to jump. Then we are going to set the ghost effect to 20 and switch costume to jump. Now we're going to change the effect Y by negative 15 so it goes down a bit and then point in direction round, then a times three and then duplicate this block and do x speed of player. So round x speed of player times three. A repeat 20 times. Then we are going to change the effect x by the abs of and change this to cosine of 90 minus direction, then take all of that times negative three. So this, what this is going to do is just make it move in the direction that it is going. And then do the same for effect y. So put that under here and do change effect y to sign. Then go ahead and do change the ghost effect by five. So it slowly fades out and change the size by negative one. And then last but not least, delete this clone. So it gets rid of that clone. So let's test this out. If we go ahead and create clone of the the effects, you should see that it just kind of creates this nice jumping effect and if we move it'll kind of angle at the speed that we're going. To see this better let's go ahead and go into the backdrop and make this a different color so maybe like a little gray like that. So now you can see that if we go ahead and jump around this is what it would look like. So if I time it with the jump this is exactly what it would look like and it looks super super cool. So now we just need to actually make this spawn without us having to manually click the code block. So 
go into the player and add another when I receive start. Now add a forever loop and an if else and add a if the state is equal to slide and we're going to leave that blank for now and then add an if statement in the else part and do if w is pressed which means we're jumping then add an and in here and we need to do touching ground where is that i don't see the variable here we must have made it for the sprite only make a new variable called touching ground and just change something so i did a double dot for all sprites and now go ahead and just set the touching the new touching ground to those right there and delete the old one and now you can go ahead and rename the new one to whatever you wanted before. So now you should see that it is for all sprites. Cool, that is better. So now we add an and in this loop here and do touching ground is equal to yes. That means we are jumping and we're touching the ground. Then we're going to create clone of effects. And this is not working because it's actually not yes, we used Y. I always do that. But now you can see that when we jump, it makes this nice jumping particle. But there's a problem. If we touch the wall, you can see that it kind of goes absolutely bonkers. So how we can fix this is make a new variable called touching wall with a question mark. Make sure you do for all sprites. We're going to set the touching wall to yes, right underneath this change X by and all that slow stuff then scroll up and at the very top of this loop set the touching wall to no so now all we need to do is add another and into this loop and do touching wall is equal to n for no so now you should see that it doesn't do that weird glitchy stuff anymore now we're going to go ahead and just wait 0.05 seconds and it should get rid of that duplicate that it spawns okay let's go ahead and make a new for all sprite variable called effect type. So this is going to tell the effect what type it's going to be. Then right before this create clones, we're going to set the effect type to jump. Then we're going to set the clone ID right here instead of jump in the effects to effect type. Now add another if else and do if the clone ID is equal to contact, which is that little circle. So we're going to change effect Y by negative 40, set the ghost effect to 50. Woo, that was a voice crack. And switch costume to contact. Then we're going to delete that and then delete these two blocks. Then change ghost effect by 4 and size by negative 5 and repeat 25 times. So now you should see that if we do the effect type to jump and create clone of effects, it makes the right one. But if we set the effect type to contact and create clone, it makes that little circle. So that's how we know this is working. So now go ahead and just take that out and do a set effect type to contact and create clone of effects. Then wait 0.05 seconds and do the jump. So now you can see that it makes that contact one and then the jumping one. Go ahead and add a point in direction 90 in this loop. Now let's make the dust. So duplicate this and do if clone ID is equal to dust. Now we're going to go ahead and do change the effect Y by negative 25. Then we're going to duplicate all of this, delete the ghost effect and do switch costume to dust, set size to pick random 80 to 150, point in direction, pick random 1 to 360, repeat 20 change ghost effect by 4 and change size by negative 5 and then change the effect y by 0 0.5. Three. Now you can see if we go ahead and set the effect type to dust and create clone of effects, it spawns right at Night Ninja's feet. Now we just need to do another when I receive start. You can duplicate that one. And if key A is pressed or key D is pressed and then an and touching the ground, then we're going to set the effect type to dust, create clone of effects, and then wait 0.2 seconds. So now if we go ahead and start this game, you can see that when we walk around, we now now have this nice dust particles and when we jump we have some nice particles so this is all working properly thank you all so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you learned something how to animate your character and sprites make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing for more scratch tutorials like this one but anyway this has been owen and i am out